dryer vents can be damaging your home and cost you a lot of money. This is Marco Volk from www.houseinvestigations.com. Dryer vents are damaging homes all over the country. People take for granted that you simply put clothes in a dryer and voila, like magic, they come out dry. You need energy to dry clothes. Newton's law states for every action there's equal and opposite reaction. The clothes being dry are only one part of this magical formula. The rest is heat and water vapor. It is this water vapor that can damage your home. Poor dryer vents, which I'll define in a minute, can be a major moisture load generator in your home. This moisture may cause high indoor humidity. High indoor humidity is a bad thing. This can cause condensation on colder surfaces such as window ceilings, attic sheeting, crawl space walls, basement walls, and poorly insulated north exterior walls, also above drop ceilings. Did you know that the north side of your home is about two to three cooler because of less solar exposure? Sometimes this can cause dripping water from light fixtures, can lights, it can cause tight doors, tight windows, belting floors, and in some cases mushrooms growing at interior north windows. And finally, fungal reservoirs as we all know, mold can be the outcome. It's very simple. Moist air is lighter than dry air. This is why we have clouds and rain. Your home is no different. It can rain your home and you may never even notice it until you smell mold, sea mold, or wood boring insects like termites or carpet rants take over. Wood boring insects love moist wood. Your home may be rotting from the inside out. Dryer Vent Anatomy 101. The simple rule of 25 pertains to dryer vents. Your dryer vent cannot be longer than 25 feet minus 5 feet for 90 bends and minus 2.5 feet for 45 bends. If your dryer vent is longer than this 25 foot minus these bends, your drying time will be longer, which means more energy. In Marco's world, longer drying time also means moisture leakage into your home. In some of my investigations, People discharge their dryer vents into crawl spaces, attics, and garages. What engineering school teaches this? Some people think that they can save this excess dryer hot air energy and use it to heat the crawl space or garage. Other times, the dryer vent is plugged with lint or bird's nests. If it took your jeans 24 minutes to dry and now it's taking 37 minutes to dry, it's not your dryer getting old. Go check the vent. You may have to hire a duct cleaner to suck out lint or a bird's nest. Many times a dryer vent is too long or has too many bends or is crimped. These conditions cause a major pressure drop in the vent line. It's like tying a rope around your neck, causing you to choke. Your dryer is choking. Sometimes a dryer vents travel long distances through a non-conditioned space like cold attics, garages, and crawl spaces. This, the discharging vapors can condensate inside the dryer vent line because the dew point is being reached. Now you have water dripping back down your dryer vent and leaking inside your walls. Sometimes people run long runs using PVC plastic pipe. If you're going to use PVC plastic pipe, you better install cleanouts because a smooth pipe may permit static attraction, which may cause quicker clogging. A couple other dryer conditions that do not work. The dryer vent traps that you put in line that lets the air out and keeps the lint in. It still lets the moisture out and now you have a mold making machine. And what about those water trap gizmos that vent dryer exhaust into a small bucket of water? This is like farting in a puddle. You still smell the fart. These things simply do not work and will never work and will permit humid moist air to escape in your house. This humid air will then condensate on cold surfaces such as attics, basement walls, behind insulation, and permit fungal amplification. Mold. Builders are installing laundry rooms in stupid places like centers of homes. Their architects is at it this way so all the people in the bedrooms have the same distance to walk. Now they are forced to run long distance dryer vents and are forced to run these dryer vents through non-conditioned spaces like attics. Do you think a builder is going to pay for a booster fan for a dryer vent? I don't think so. Coincidentally, if you have a situation where you must break the rule of 25, you will need to install a booster fan. This is an electrical unit that helps pull the dryer exhaust to the exterior. Booster fans also mean more energy and potential house depressurization, which is a whole different set of problems which would take a whole other 5 minute video to explain. Leaking dryer vents cost poor indoor air. Not only is humidity a problem, 
but so is the lint airborne particulate, which is the byproduct of your clothes slowly disintegrating or falling apart every time you wash and dry them. Lint is airborne particulate that you breathe. Lint is also mold food. I perform aggressive particle profiling using a laser particle counter in many homes. Homes with bad dryer vent joints, leaking joints, loose joints, or joints that are too long, are usually contaminated with high indoor airborne particulate, or house dust as the general public calls it. Lint particulate can be very small, float in the air for a long time, and it will make its way into your lungs. I do many complaint calls where people say they are sick, have asthma, cough and sneeze, are allergic, and etc. 90% of the time, it's, the, it's indoor humidity related. High indoor humidity is a bad thing. High indoor humidity coupled with old carpets and throw in a pet or two spells disaster. Now you have dust mite production. Dust mites love humidity levels of 50% or greater. These little guys can shit 50 times their weight per day. We call these this shit fecal pellets. These fecal, fecal pellets float in the air and you breathe them into your lungs. It's like a million floating microscopic brown colored Tic Tacs. Yum. And you think these people are getting sick from a little bit of mold in the basement? To sum things up, you need the shortest vent run with the fewest bends. You need to control the humidity in your home. We recommend using a condensing dehumidifier. And forget about all those gizmos. You cannot build a better mousetrap. This is Marco Volk from www.houseinvestigations.com. Thank you for watching this video. Please watch my other videos for house learning materials.